Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome back to V Brown Bank. Just what you need at the end of your day. Uh, uh, a guy from Cisco to talk to you about networking at where else but VMworld. Uh, but first, I just want to say uh, thanks to the V Brown Bank team for actually inviting me out and giving me a chance to, to talk about some of the, the interesting things we're doing in the networking space that uh, will, I hope you agree, mesh well with a lot of the things that you're doing in the VMware space. Uh, all the other uh, stories flying around the side, we actually still do quite a bit of work together. And the stuff I want to show you today has to do with uh, a relatively new uh, networking platform called Nexus 9K. I'll try to keep the marketing to a minimum. I am an engineer by, by trade. My heart of hearts, my core is an engineer. Uh, I grew up uh, building uh, and troubleshooting data centers long before Cisco, so I have quite a bit of experience uh, uh, getting my hands dirty. Uh, but with uh, I've been with Cisco for the last 10 years now. Uh, I'm based in Europe. Uh, I'm living in Amsterdam, fantastic city. Uh, but uh, yeah, last 10 years I've been with Cisco. And where do I work? I work for what we call NCME Networks Business Unit. So if you care, that's the business unit that actually makes the Nexus 9K. And something else that I'm hoping that you have heard at least mention of, uh, something that we call ACI or application-centric infrastructure. So without further ado, let's actually get going. So as, uh, as my colleague Lauren asked me to, to uh, do this presentation, I thought, hmm, a Cisco guy at VMworld, most of the audience probably didn't come to hear Cisco talk. He didn't pay good money to hear Cisco talk. If you did, I, I can get a refund for you. I, I promise. I'm just kidding. Um, so I thought, how could I grab some attention? How could I at least keep it fun and interesting and not so much you know, blah blah marketing stuff that you've probably you know seen a million times. So I thought, use cultural references, right? Cultural references can get people interested. So I came up with my attention grabber, so to speak. And that attention grabber is to start with a question. So the question is, and if you, if you you know hopefully you you're interesting enough to follow along about how I arrived at this question is, what do Star Trek, The Princess Bride movie, and Top Gear all have in common? Well, if you, if you stay around with me for the next 20 or so minutes, uh, I'll actually answer that question. So, let's actually jump into it. I just want to first kind of lay a little bit of the groundwork to talk about some trends that we're seeing in the data center. And largely, these trends are being driven by you, the VMware admins, because if you go back in history, not too long ago, but far enough, you'll find that, you know, I think we all agree, VMware dramatically changed the whole data center landscape, how we build data centers, how we build networks, all the orchestration and management, I mean, it, it, it changed everything, it turned everything upside down. So, you know, fantastic technology that rightfully has you know, huge market share, very popular, which is why we have nice events like this. Uh, but if you look at the, the, the infrastructure foundation that all the virtualization runs on, you see a couple of trends. And I think the first big trend is the fact that any server you buy today is gonna come with 10 gig amount of motherboard. I mean, it's just a fact of life. You know, the, the ports get cheaper, they become more commonplace, and they ultimately become the de facto standard. So any x86 server you buy today from any vendor that you like, including Cisco UCS, will pretty much come with 10 gig, right? So if you have 10 gig at your server, you, know, you need lots of 10 gig uh, access ports in your switches. Uh, and if you're using 10 gig at the access, of course you need something bigger in the uplink, so 40 gig, 100 gig starts to become a real necessity. So there's a, there's a demand, there's always that shift an evolution of, of bandwidth in, in switching. Uh, and of course, you know, Intel, every 12 to 14 months, comes out with a new CPU. And invariably, that CPU is a, is a smaller die shrink. It has more transistors. Therefore, it usually has more cores uh, and could do more workloads. Um, so you know, Intel keeps refreshing that you know, every year or so. So it's, it's actually driving the second trend. And that is, if I have a powerful server with lots of CPU, lots of memory, lots of bandwidth, what does that mean as a VM admin? Well, it means I can put more VMs per physical server. That's a good thing, right? So, you know, even this number here, I, I was looking at that number and I was talking to a few server admin friends of mine, and even 24 today is probably a bit low. Maybe, maybe that number is a little bit dated because I'm starting to see, you know, depending on workload and type of application, that that number is, is, is probably much higher even now uh, and continues to rise. The other change in the data center, and again, largely driven by virtualization technologies, is the nature of traffic flows. So, used to be, you know, Cisco, if, you, if you've been anywhere around Cisco for the last 20 years, we've been preaching this three-tier network uh, architecture, this core distribution access, right? And for 20 years, you know, we've been 
we've been embracing that. And it's not a bad model, but it's a model that's designed for a different time. It's really a model that uh, is optimized for what we call north-south traffic. So you have some guy outside of the data center going across a WAN link with a, a request into an application server or database server. Some amount of work gets done and the result gets sent back out across the WAN. That's normally north-south. That used to be the prevalent form of traffic for that 20 years. But things have changed in the last you know, handful of years. Uh, where now we find that the vast majority of traffic is now what we call east-west. So you have you know, easy examples like eMotion is an east-west kind of traffic pattern. You have application workloads that are multiple tiers. So a web server uh, you know, might need to talk back to an application server to actually do some useful work, and that application server has to talk to a database server, and lots of east-west traffic happens in between. So this trend is driving you know, changes in the data center. So really, to get to the, the point, long story is, you know, how, how is Cisco responding to the changes that virtualization technology is bringing to the data center and how can we make it better? Or, and because this is a, you know, a VMware specific crowd, how can I make VMware run as best as we possibly can on the necessary infrastructure that it runs on? So, we have something called Nexus 9K, and I swear to you, this is my last marketing slide. I'll try to give you something much more practical because, again, I said I'm an engineer at heart, and I don't want to lie. Lauren would disagree or disapprove. So basically, Nexus 9K is a, is, a, is a new product line for us a couple of years, about a year and a half or so ago. It's basically answering those trends that I just laid out in the, in the, uh, in the slide before. So a nice 10 gig network, 40 gig uplinks, ultimately 100 gig uplinks. Uh, it's all line rate, non-blocking, all the kind of stuff that you'd want to have in your underlay because whatever virtualization technology you're running in your compute, you're going to need a capable network to actually transport that traffic. I don't care if it's just straight VMware or NSX or something else, you need a, a capable underlay. So one other thing that's interesting about the Nike is we can do things in hardware for our best performance. So VX line of hardware. So if you're doing anything with something like NSX, you're probably already starting to get familiar with overlays and the possibilities that we can now bring with stuff like VXLAN. And the fact that we can actually do it in hardware is going to give you a nice performance uh, uh, boost in, in, your, in your underlay. Um, there's this other thing at the end that I call the four Ps, and I, I, I know it's really marketing and I kind of cringe, but it's easy to remember, you know, five Ps, you know, five Ps. What are the Ps, right? So I'm not going to go through all of those in detail because I would absolutely put you to sleep. But if you know, if you just kind of go down, you know, we talked about performance: 10 gig, 40 gig, line rate, VXLAN and hardware, all the support that you need in terms of you know routing protocols and, and features that you would have in a data center switch, right? We did some third-party uh, testing as well that kind of validates that hey, you're going to have to buy this underlay from somebody. You know, why would you pick Cisco over somebody else? Well, these are the kind of reasons that might you know, capture your interest. So performance is there. Price. Now, I, the skeptic in me always jumps up when I hear price and Cisco because, well, I should take off my Cisco badge when I say this, and it is being recorded. We, we're, we're not known for being the lowest cost vendor in the room. You know, we usually come in with what we think is a cool technology, and because it adds a lot of value, we think we can get a premium or command a premium. And usually that works out. I mean, if you did any work with UCS, you, you saw that kind of play out. Uh, but you'll be surprised to say, and I swear I'm not lying, I bet my CCIE on this, we're actually among the lowest cost, if not the lowest cost 10 gig, 40 gig switch vendor today. Cisco is, and I'm not joking. No smile on my face. Oh, I'm not joking, we actually have a really good price. So I mean, it's one of those things where you're asking yourself, I'm, I'm designing a new data center, I need to choose something, what are the compelling reasons for me to go this way or that way? Uh, and if it does everything at line rate with performance in hardware and it's cheaper than everything else, I mean, why not, right? Um, port density, I think that speaks for itself. Lots of cheap 10 gig ports, lots of 40 gig uplinks, big deal. Power, um, it's not one of those sexy topics when you talk to, to uh, to teams, but if you look at a data center budget, if you're the guy who's paying the bills, you're probably looking at 25, 30% of your budget is just going to power cooling. And I say, you know, it's not really sexy. The facilities guys get, you know, get all excited, but nobody else does. But I'm thinking if I can give you a platform that does what you need and it actually costs you less to run, you know, in terms of you know, power and cooling costs, that might be uh, a way to save your budget and spend it on the other cool technology that you really like, you know, like something, you know, like, you know, be realized or some kind of automation technology. Uh, the last one, programmable, and I'm going to say that word a lot of times from this point forward, programmable, programmable, programmable. That's what the rest of my, my time will be spent on because I wanted to talk about some of the really cool things we've done recently that 
bring a whole new set of tools and capabilities to server admins, to VMware admins that we never had before. I mean, Cisco has really moved out of the dark ages of plain old CLI, and we've done a, a lot of things under that programmable head. Now, if you're a skeptic like me, your internal Inigo Montoya pops up in your head, and you say, programmable, you, you keep using that word. And of course, if you've seen the movie Princess Bride, you know, you keep using that word. Uh, I don't think it means what you think it means, right? It's because Cisco, again, not known for being open, programmable, flexible with just about anything in the open source community. Uh, well, good, good news here is absolutely that is changing. So we have our first cultural reference here. So we, uh, we very uh, in, uh, recently released a new version of NXOS. So NXOS is what's running in our standalone switches, right? It's, NXOS has been around for eight, eight years or, or so. So it's very well known in the industry. So as you're, if you're a VMware admin but don't really do the network stuff, your network guys will know NXOS if you have Cisco. Well, we have a version called Open NXOS. So what we're really doing is taking NXOS and pulling the covers back and actually exposing all of the innards to you through things like APIs and programmatic tools. Um, and I'll go very briefly through each one of these uh, of these categories. But you know, on a slide, it looks busy and kind of boring. But when you start to think about what you can do now in an open programmatic model, I hope you'll actually be uh, impressed. So if we look at the first one, bootstrap and provisioning, OK, not terribly exciting. But your server admins are probably already doing and have been doing for years things like Pixie Boot. Uh, to boot up the server, uh, get the OS, or get the operating system up, and then pull the config uh, for that device, right? So it's, it's a process that you likely already know about very well. Um, well, now you can actually bring or extend that process out to your network infrastructure. As, you know, as your network grows or you need to add more switches, you can just install the switch, pixie boot the switch, pull the config that you've already got done ahead of time, and within a matter of minutes, you've got that, that new device up and running. So, um, you know, th this is one of the things that you could do in open NXOS on Nexus 9K and 3K. You know, the next one is interesting if you're if you're talking about using uh, things like Puppet and Chef to manage your network. And again, you know, I'm a network guy, so you know, as of a couple of years ago, Puppet and Chef were foreign to me because it was really what server admins were using to to manage and configure and monitor all of their servers. Well. What, what is a switch, right? It's, it's another type of server that just focuses on networking. So the fact that you can now natively, natively install RPMs like Puppet, like Chef, uh, right on your switch, um, you could install like a Nagios agent right on your switch for monitoring. I mean, all of these types of tools that you're likely already familiar with in other parts of your environment, you can now homogenize and bring it to your network environment as well. So no longer do you have this server guys over here, network guys over here, two different universes, different sets of tools, different processes. We can start to bring those teams together in that kind of DevOps kind of thinking of tools that we already know and use for the, for the servers, we can now use for our network switches as well. The third one is open interfaces. And I don't know if you have any programmers in, in the house, but we have a bash shell right on the switch, right? So if you're doing shell scripting or you're using commands that are familiar to you in a bash uh, type of environment, you can now do that on a switch. So so, so what do I mean? I mean, if, if you're doing something in Linux in bash, you're doing things like ifconfig, or you're doing IP route, or you're doing utilities like TCP dump so that you can sniff traffic. Well, now the fact that we have basically a bash shell right on the switch, you can use all of those tools as if it were a Linux box, right? So now you're managing your network devices exactly like you manage your Linux boxes as well. So again, unifying uh, the procedures, using common tools, making life generally better, faster, and, and, and uh, yeah. So the fourth one is adaptable NXOS, right? So earlier I said you could install RPMs and agents on, on your switches directly now. What if there's something that you want to do with, there isn't an agent written, there's no commercial option or open source option, and you say, well, in our environment, we like to roll our own. We want to do our own sorts of scripts and agents. So in order for you to, to do that, we've provided an SDK right on the switch as well. So not only can you write your scripts, but you can make and build your own packages and test them and distribute them across your Nexus 9K, 3K. So again, lots of flexibility and choices where you are not married to the sort of antiquated CLI that Cisco's given us. You can now start to use 
all of the, the things that you've been using, scripting tools, agents, etc., etc. The, the next one is my absolute favorite, and I'll spend a little bit more time showing you a practical example as well. So we actually have something called NX API. So this is doing a couple things for you. It's giving you a native Python shell right on your Switch. So if you are a scripter, and Python seems to be you know, the most popular scripting language for data center configuration and monitoring, you have a native Python shell right on the script. So any scripts you have right now, you can run them right on your Switch. Not only that, with NX API, NX API will allow you to write a script and actually make an HTTP call to any number of Nexus 3K, 9K, actually pretty much any Nexus switch today with the latest code, and actually have a script go out and talk to all of those devices all at once through your script and either collect information or configure things through a programmatic model. So what's, what's interesting here and, and what the big change is here is it's not using an expect script. It's not doing CLI, screen scraping, and then parsing line number five, word number six, to get some kind of answer, like a serial number or a VLAN number. It's not that, because that is the old, ineffective way of doing, uh, doing things, and it's absolutely not the best way to do things at all. We want to be able to bring a programmatic, repeatable model to all of our devices, not just one device at a time, CLI, CLI. So, um, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about more of, that, uh, more of that in the slides. I'm actually going to show you a really cool tool, something that you can actually use right now if you have any Nexus switch with pretty much the latest code that you can, that you can download. And, and the last one is we are also publicly supporting agents. You know, like you, know, you can go to the, the, the marketplaces of Chef and Puppet and download the proper agents from them in their generic form, but maybe you actually want to extend the, the capabilities of those agents because there's something unique in your environment that you want to do with those agents. Well, you can actually extend and add on. We have a, a community on GitHub as well that is a, is a good source for ideas and tips and ways to, to, to make the most of that as well. And finally, and this is really not new news, but it's a, it's a reminder, if you're looking at anything in the OpenStack space, we are supporting the ML2 plugin as well as the Neutron plugin. So if you're doing any kind of uh, you know, cloud building with OpenStack as, as your as your framework, the Nexus 9K, 3K is going to be uh, a nice fit within that. So, getting all past that, the, the, the example that I thought was the coolest, because I'm a network guy, right? I'm not a programmer. I don't know how to script, but all the stuff that's changing so fast in the data center that I find myself becoming a scripter, becoming a programmer. So, the other day I was uh, actually learning Power CLI for my v my uh, vCenter server in my environment because I do a lot of work with vCenter and ACI and I always blow up my lab and I want to restart it and rebuild it so I've been writing some scripts to kind of do some cleanup in, in vCenter with PowerCLI so I'm getting you know, pretty pretty good at you know, PowerShell commandments and things but there's a couple of other things that I'm starting to get involved with and one of those is, is Python. Um, so as I said I'm not a programmer. I have the programming skills of a five-year-old from 1972. That just goes to show you that uh, this is not a skill I have, but all of this work that we're doing in OpenNXS is are bringing lots of easy to consume tools for people who are experts, people who are intermediate, people who are absolute programming beginners like me. And I was actually amazed that I could do all of this stuff. And I'll actually you know, show you the, the, the screenshot of the example. So what is it? Um, we basically took NXOS and we, we, we put it into an object model, right? So everything in NXOS is an object that has an attribute. And those objects, of course, have relationships. What we can do is we can make an HTTP call through this API and get the, the value of an object or set the value of an object uh, through this structured programmatic approach. And the, 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 uh, the input is, is JSON. So it's a, it's a structured object-based format. So the, the, the example here is I remember uh, years ago, probably more years than I want to admit, uh, I used to be a network admin and uh, for Broadcom, in fact, and we had three data centers. We had about 30 sites around the world, so we had hundreds of switches and routers and devices. And we had a situation where we had a security incident, let's say, and we needed to change the SNMP read write string and the enable password on all of our devices. So we had a mix of models, we had a mix of, of iOS and NXOS, and then I remember we had to go through like 500 devices and the first time we did it, it was a manual process, and it sucked. It took us you know, weeks to actually go through, and if we forgot even one device, 
we left a gaping security hole in our network. So we thought, man, we never want to go through this again. So how can we make it better? So my 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 boss at the time, who was pretty good with scripting, says, I'll write it. I'll write a script. I'll write a script. It'll 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 be magical. It'll be beautiful. We'll take care. If this ever happens again, it'll be it'll be beautiful. So he spent a couple of months, you know, writing a script, testing the script. Um, you know, it was basically an expect script and screen scraping, and he would get it all. And after about three, four months of, 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 of development time and testing, he finally goes, "The script is ready. Let's run it." So we, you know, we ran it. It worked. A couple of problems, we fixed them, and life was good. And then we upgraded the code on a couple of the devices, and it broke the scripts. Cisco likes to do that, right? So maybe the serial number output line is no longer on line five; it's on line six because we added a copyright 2015 line or something. So the script would keep breaking. Every time we upgraded code, the script would break. And it became so much maintenance that the, the script became basically useless, right? That, that's the old way of doing it. So with NX API, now that everything's an object, who cares if Cisco makes a change in how it's displayed or written out? The object is the object is the object. When you make that call, you call the object, and it always is that object. So if things change, it's not going to break your script, right? The other important thing is it's repeatable, right? I can build the script once, feed, say, a list of IPs of all of my switches into it, and have the script go out and log into each one and do all of this stuff, uh, uh, you know, automated. So now if I go back to my use case, 500 devices, different devices with different code, if I had NX API, I could have probably written a six or seven line script, even me, you know, being the non-scripter, uh, that would have changed the SNMP read write string, changed the enable password, and done it in less than five minutes. Right? That's that's the kind of improvements that we're talking about here. Um, and of course, I said it's in structured uh, XML or JSON mode. So let me give you a screenshot of this. I I wish I had, you know, I could do a live demo for you because I can actually prove that me non-scripting Joe can actually script. So if you if you look really closely at the screen, um, you'll see that. We've got something called the, the NX API Developer Sandbox. So this is running resident on your Nexus switch, as long as you have the, the latest code, right? You turn it on by doing feature NX API and NX API Sandbox, and then you simply point a web browser to your switch, and you get this. It's a sandbox to play in. So here's the cool thing about it, right? I know CLI. I know NXOS really well. I've been doing it for far longer than I care to admit. You type in your iOS, or in this case, NXOS command here. Show interface brief, right? Anyone who's Cisco will know how to type CLI. What it does is it shows you in a JSON format what that would look like, and then it actually gives you the response. It gives you the value of the objects, right? Okay, big deal, right? And who cares? I typed in a command, I got JSON. But here's where, it, here's where this turned me into a scripting genius, I guess you could say, not really, but you can click on the Python button right here, and it will actually generate the Python script for you. So I don't know how to write Python, but what I do know how to do really well is copy and paste. So I was playing just last night in my hotel room because I thought, hey, if I can do this, right, anybody can do this. So I wrote, uh, I, I was setting the NTP servers of my switch. So I, I used the sandbox, I got my little uh, Python scripts, uh, I went into you know Python idle, I pasted it in there, and I put in the IP address of my switch and I pushed it and it worked. <laughs> it worked. I was like, wow, that was like five minutes worth of work. I'm a programmer now, so maybe I should get a raise. Kidding, Joe? Kidding. But, but the point is, is you have this right now. It's a free tool in your Switch right now. You have a web browser, point it to your Switch, and go to town. So this is now starting to uh, bring a whole new set of rich and powerful tools that allow you to manage your network devices like you manage your servers, like you manage your vCenter uh, environment if you're using things like Python as well. So you're probably, again, thinking, I'm a skeptic, you're a skeptic, you're probably thinking, yeah, 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 this, this really sounds great, Joe, programming this, API, that, objects, but really, why do I care? What, what, is it, what does it mean to me? So to answer that question, we have our second cultural reference. We'll ask Captain Picard. So the other day, I was, I, I was watching Star Trek Next Generation, and in the, in, the, in the episode, like a lot of them, you know, Picard goes into his ready room, and he, he goes over to the wall, and what does he say? What does he say? He says, T. Earl Grey hot, right? And immediately, in seconds, it's synthesized right in front of him, right? And I got to thinking, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we've been promising with cloud, right? I want something, and here's the way I want it, and give it to me right now. Because if you can't give it to me right now, then what's the point? So I thought, what it must have been like for Captain, Captain Kirk uh, uh, in the old Enterprise, right? He wants a 
cup of tea, Earl Grey hot. So he's got to call down to the galley on his communicator and say, you know, I want some tea. Bring it. And then the, sh the, the, the cook in the galley has got to put the tea on and boil the water and get the tea out, steep it. And he's got to get somebody to actually take it up to his ready room, right? By that time, the Klingons are already attacking or the tea's gone cold and nobody needs it anymore, right? So that's the old way of doing things. We need the fast next generation, I guess, uh, way of doing things here. And that's, that's, that's what all of this programming ability and these, this stuff is doing. Is it's allowing you yeah. to bring your networking devices out of the Stone Age and into the cloud. So now you can start so, uh, doing automation orchestration and extend uh, that well, out so to your uh, uh, you know to your networking infrastructure as well. So we have a, a road to SDN, but uh, I'm, yeah, I'm out of time. What I'm saying is oh, okay. you have a yeah, lot of choices. You have tools that you can do it yourself. You can roll your own, which a lot of service providers like to do. You can start doing third-party controllers. Why not? It's programmable, right? Or you can look at something like if you wanted the whole kit as a unified That's system, weird. you can look at something like ACI. Now this talk isn't about ACI, but what I'm saying is you have a couple of choices here. So um, I didn't mention it before, but Nexus 9K can run in two modes, right? NXOS standalone mode, which is what I've been talking about, and ACI mode. So I won't talk about ACI, but I did want to bring a brief warning about SDNs, and this is my last, last slide. So this is my, my top tier slide. So there's an inherent danger in overlays, right? Overlays are a good thing, but you have this danger of the overlay being completely unaware of what's happening in the underlay and completely disconnected. So my last slide is is an example from Top Gear. So this is how I brought in Top Gear into the mix. They did an uh, episode where they said they're going to raise their German uh, compatriots. And in, uh, but to make it interesting, they said we're going to take a British car and stack another British car on top of it, and the Germans would do the same. But here's the twist. There's two drivers. The driver in the top only has steering control. The driver in the bottom only has throttle. And they have to race each other around the Formula One track. You can imagine the chaos and comedy that ensued, but that's kind of what's happening when you have a generic overlay that's not aware of what's happening in the underlay. You need to bring those two things together, and that's the type of stuff that Cisco is thinking about when we talk about Nexus 9K and standalone mode or ACI. So if you're thinking about running NSX, to us, NSX is another application uh, that can run really well on top of Nexus 9K or ACI. So I will uh, gracefully bow out and say goodbye. Uh, if you have any interest in talking more, uh, I'll be at the Cisco booth uh, for half of tomorrow. Uh, if you want to chat, you want to see some cool demos, you want to tell me I'm full of it, no problem, come on by and we'd be happy to talk. So, thank you, and I believe that is the end of my presentation. Thank you, Lauren, thank you, V. Brownback, and thank you, all viewers. Done.